Okay guys, this is the uh, last video in the NMR series, and so we'll be talking about the fine structure of NMR spectra, uh, focusing exclusively on proton NMR. Uh, and what we find, uh, as, you, as you already know, is that in, in proton NMR spectra, the signals that we see, the resonances, they often have, um, uh, instead of uh, single peak resonances, we often see uh, multiplets, okay, so groups of, of lines that are sort of clustered around a central frequency. And so we'll consider the case of uh, chloroethane as an example. Uh, so instead of seeing just two peaks in chloroethane, uh, what you actually see are a pair of multiplets. Uh, and so for the, um, the methylene group here, uh, which is significantly... Um, which has a significantly larger chemical shift due to the fact that the chlorine is an electronegative atom that pulls electron density away from the methylene group, uh, so it's uh, it has a larger a larger chemical shift. What we see is that it appears as a quartet, so you have four four peaks here, uh, whereas the methyl group uh, at the end of the molecule, which is um, at a smaller chemical shift, uh, it appears. Uh, as a triplet. And so the purpose of this of this video is to um, explain uh, explain these patterns that we see. Uh, you probably know from organic chemistry that this is due to the n plus 1 rule. And the aim of, of this uh, video is to explain the origin of the n plus 1 rule. And so um, uh, at the end of the day, this, this fine structure that we see arises due to coupling between the spin angular momenta of nearby atoms. Okay, so in, in chloroethane, the spin angular momenta of the methyl protons are coupled to the spin angular momenta of the methylene atoms, and this is what gives rise to the splitting uh, that you see in the, in the resonances. Here is the uh, Hamiltonian describing that coupling, and so we have a, a coupling constant J uh, and then here we have the two Z components of these different nuclei here. We're calling them group one and group two. Uh, they are coupled, coupled together. And so if you look at the energy associated with this coupling, it's going to depend upon the um, Z component, the, the M sub I values for each of the two uh, groups of, of, um, of protons in the molecule. Uh, J, the coupling constant, can be positive or negative, uh, but the thing that's important to note is that it does not depend upon the external magnetic field, so the value of J is determined by the molecule itself, not any applied uh, external field. And what we'll look at are uh, several types of spin systems. Here, this notation, A and X, they denote protons, okay? And so in an AX system, we have two protons, that are in chemically um, very different environments. Okay, so the NMR frequency for for nucleus A is very different from the from the NMR frequency of nucleus X. Uh, in this case, we have one of each type. Uh, in an AX2 system, we have one of A type and two of X type. In the AX3, we have one of A type and three of X type. And so we'll we'll look at the uh, patterns that you get for these different simple simple cases. Um, so here what I've uh, enumerated are for the AX system. So we just have two, two protons in our, in our molecule. Uh, they have different NMR frequencies, uh, but they are coupled together. And so the, uh, the energy levels that take into account the coupling, we have a sum of the resonances for atom A and atom X. And then this new term here, this is due to the coupling between nucleus A and nucleus X. And so you see the, the coupling constant J present. Well, um, you know, each of these uh, M sub uh, values, so, so this would be the uh, quantum number for the Z component on atom on nucleus A. This is the quantum number for the Z component of the spin angular momentum on nucleus X. There are four possible states. So uh, the nu nucleus A and X can be both up they could be both down, 
one could be up, the other could be down, and vice versa. The other one could be down and the other could be up. And so these, uh, these equations here, they enumerate the energies for these different cases. Uh, alpha denotes spin up and beta denotes spin down. So the E alpha alpha corresponds to this up up and the E beta beta corresponds to this uh, down down uh, configuration. And so these are, the, these are the expressions that you get for those different energy states. And there are four of them. And so we see that the uh, th there's a pattern here that you can see that the, uh, the coupling correction for the alpha-alpha increases the energy of the alpha-alpha state. Uh, likewise, for the beta-beta state, which is at a higher, um, higher energy, uh, we see that its energy also increases due to the coupling. However, for the mixed terms, the mixed energy states, uh, where you you know you have combinations of up and down, uh, we see that the coupling term is negative in both cases, and, and so if J is positive, then that's going to decrease uh, decrease the energy of these levels. Uh, if you take the if you take these energies and start taking the difference of them, okay, so looking at the difference in energy between these different spin states, divide by Planck's constant, that's going to give you the, the possible NMR frequencies that you could observe. Uh, but there is an important selection rule in place, uh, which states that only one nuclear spin flip can occur at a given time. And so that means that alpha-alpha to beta-alpha transitions are allowed, and alpha-beta to beta-beta transitions are allowed. However, Alpha alpha to beta beta transitions are not allowed because that would involve flipping two spins at once. Okay, and at the end of the day, what you find out are that there are two groupings of allowed transitions. Uh, in this first group here, they are centered at the NMR frequency for nucleus A, plus and minus a coupling term involving J. And then for the other grouping, they are centered about the resonance for, at, for nucleus X, plus and minus a coupling term. Okay, so this is a pair of doublets. Okay, one centered about nu A, the other centered about nu X. And so the separation between the two doublets is given by the difference in the NMR frequencies of the two nuclei. That quantity does depend upon the external field. However, the spacing within a doublet is equal to just J, and that does not depend on the applied external field. Uh, here is a figure depicting the energy levels. So here we have the energy levels for the case where there is no spin-spin coupling. Okay, so you have these four states, and these are their energy levels. And then what happens when you allow the um, nucleus A and nucleus X to become coupled? What you find for the case of positive J values is that the energy of the up-up state increases, the energy of the down-down state increases, and the energy of these mixed states decreases. And these different arrows here in the middle, these represent the allowed, um, the allowed transitions, okay? So you can, you can only flip one spin at a time. So if you're in the up-up state, you can undergo a transition to the up-down state. Likewise, you can also undergo a transition to the down-up state, but you can't go all the way up to the down-down state when you start off in the up-up state. Uh, you can undergo a transition from the up-down state to the down-down state, and you can undergo a transition from the down-up state to the down-down state. Okay, so there are four allowed transitions. This is another diagram depicting which transitions are allowed. And in this, in this diagram, we show the structure of the NMR spectrum. Okay, like I said before, you're going to, for this AX system, you're going to have a pair of doublets separated by the frequency difference between 
the resonances of nucleus A and nucleus X. And then within each doublet, the spacing is J. That spacing uh, does not depend on the externally applied magnetic field. Next, we'll look at the AX2 system. Okay. Um, the X resonance is nearly identical to the AX system. That is, it's split into a doublet. However, because there are two X protons, uh, we'll find that the integrated intensity for that resonance is twice that of the AX system. And that's depicted here in this figure. Okay, so this is the resonance for atom X, or for nucleus X. Uh, it appears as a doublet, but relative to the AX system, the AX2 resonance will have twice the integrated uh, intensity. The, um, the resonance for, for nucleus A is split twice. Okay, it's split by one of the X nuclei, but then those are then in turn split again. And the way it works out due to, the, due to how these, these, um, uh, these transitions are, are arranged is, is you wind up with a triplet uh, pattern in the NMR spectrum where you have a one, two, one pattern. Uh, the, the overall intensity for this triplet will actually be the same as the AX system because there's only one atom or only one nucleus A in the AX2 system. And here's a diagram depicting that splitting. So, so you would imagine that this here is the uh, uncoupled um, resonance. And then coupling to the first atom X, the first nucleus X splits you once, and then each of these are split again by the second nucleus. Okay, and then just the way that the, the coupling works out, the way, the way that it's set up is that, is that two of those um, split off states in the second iteration here will wind up at the same frequency. And so you get a triplet pattern where the intensity of the middle peak is twice that, uh, twice the intensity of the side peaks. However, the overall, the overall intensity is identical to uh, the intensity in the AX system. Here, one more system to look at, the AX3 system. Here, uh, again, because there's only one nucleus coupling to the um, to the X atoms, you're going or to the X nuclei, you're going to wind up with a doublet for the X resonance. Uh, however, this time the integrated intensity will be three times that of the AX system. Uh, the A resonance, however, is going to be split three times, okay, because there's three, uh, three nuclei here <clears throat> that are coupled to the, uh, to the atom A. You're going to wind up with a quartet and a 1, 3, 3 pattern, 1, 3, 3, 1 pattern uh, in the NMR signal. Uh, however, the overall intensity of that quartet will be identical to an AX system. And so here's a picture of the quartet, at least. Okay, so it's split once, twice, and then a third time. And just the way that the couplings work out, you wind up with this 1, 3, 3, 1 intensity pattern. Uh, this is what you already know from organic chemistry, the so-called N plus 1 rule. A nucleus with N chemically equivalent neighbors is split N times and it gives you a n plus 1 multiplet. Uh, the intensity pattern uh, can be determined by um, solving Pascal's triangle. Uh, here's a picture of that. Uh, you know, it's okay, so you start off with one and then you're split once. That would give you a doublet where each, where each peak in the doublet is the same. If you were to split again to form a triplet, okay, you would have a relative intensity of one for each of the side peaks, but then the intensity of the central peak is determined by adding together uh, the two adjacent numbers in the previous row. Okay, so one plus one gives you two. If you split that again, it's gonna give you a one, one plus two equals three, two plus one equals three, and then one, so a one, three, three, one pattern. Split that again, you're gonna have one for the side peaks, then 
to get this central, to get this um, second side peak, it would be 1 plus 3 gives you 4. The center peak would be 3 plus 3 gives you 6. 3 plus 1 gives you 4, uh, etc. And so you can, for as many times as you split it, you just keep going down, down the Pascal's triangle. Uh, in this example, it's it's uh, what we've already looked at. So it's the chloro the chloroethane. We're being asked to account for the fine structure now in that chloroethane. So just to just to go back uh, to that spectrum. Now we can we can explain it. You probably could have explained it already. Um, so the reason that we have the reason that the methylene um, protons appear as a quartet is because uh, the neighboring group contains three chemically equivalent protons. N plus one rule tells you that there would be uh, four peaks, so a quartet. And then um, for the methyl group, however, uh, there are two equivalent neighbors, and so that would that would be depicted as a triplet. And then the overall intensity here, it should be two to three, um, because because this resonance corresponds to three equivalent protons, and this resonance corresponds to two equivalent protons. Uh, in the second example problem, the follow-up, they wanted us to look at, uh, to consider the resonances in uh, ammonium. And uh, here we are, we need to take into account the fact that, um, you know, certain isotopes of nitrogen will couple with the protons. And so what we would expect, uh, since that nitrogen atom, since that I, that nitrogen nuclei could couple to the to the to the protons, we would expect the protons to appear to appear as a doublet because it has one neighbor, and the intensity pattern would be one to one. Um, and then the uh, the uh, the resonance for the nitrogen atom would be significantly downfield at much higher chemical shift, due to the fact that it has greater electron density around the nitrogen. Uh, and then we see that it has four neighbors, okay, so it's going to be four plus one will give us five, so a quintet type of, of um, resonance. And then the pattern you would get if you solve the Pascal's triangle is a one to four to six to four to one uh, type of pattern. Okay, so uh, I'm going to leave it there. Um, and then for the rest of the chapter, um, there's many interesting topics in it. Uh, we just don't have time to, to cover it all formally. Uh, and so I'll just leave it leave it up to you whether or not you want to pursue uh, pursue studying the rest of the material.